that bucket for? Water. Our taps aren't working. We'll have to go to the Magic Mountain well and get some. Get some taps? No, get some water, silly. We'll be just like Jack and Jill, so be careful you don't fall down. What do you mean? Sing the song with me and you'll see. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper. He went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown and Jill came tumbling after. Up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper. He went to bed to mend his head with vinegar and brown paper. No, Morris, I think I'm going to be famous one day. Famous? What for? Well, um, maybe I'll be famous for my wonderful singing. Don't be so daft. Just remember what happened last time you wanted to be famous. There's no need to remind me. Go on, tell everybody. No. Go on, Doris, don't be shy. Oh, all right. The Spell That Stuck. One day, Morris and I were looking through our photograph album. Look, Morris, I said, there's that picture of us on the beach. And look, there's a big picture of me. Photographs are a very nice way of remembering people, aren't they? Yes, said Morris, but I'd rather have my picture on a mug so people could see me when they had a drink. I thought for a while and said... What I'd really like is a statue of me where everyone would see it, like Magic Mountain Square. Doris, you do have such big ideas for such a small hamster, said Morris. And where would you get a statue of yourself made? I use magic, of course, silly. What's the point of being a magic hamster if you can't magic what you want? But we've never done a spell for making statues before, said Morris with a worried look on his face. Never mind, I said. I whirled round three times and said, If you want people to look at you, it's best to be a big statue. Well, before I knew it, I was standing on top of a tall stone in the middle of Magic Mountain Square. But the trouble was, I couldn't move. My arms and legs and fur had gone all hard. It was as though I'd been dipped in treacle, then baked in the oven. A bird came and sat on my head and went tap, tap, tap with his beak. The noise was terrible. At last, Morris arrived. I've never been so pleased to see him. Morris! I shouted. I'm up here! Morris looked all round then up at the stone with me on top of it. Doris, is that you? he called. Of course it is, silly, I shouted back. I've gone all hard and I can't move. Please get me down. Morris tried a few spells. First of all, he said, Hamster statues are not trendy. Please make Doris soft and bendy. Nothing happened. Then he tried, Achoo! Achoo! Go away, statue! But neither of the spells worked. Then he called up to me, I'll have to get Grandpa to help. Do be quick, Morris, I said. It's horrible being stuck up here on my own. Morris ran off and came back with Grandpa. Well, Doris called Grandpa. Are you sure you want to come down? Everyone can see you up there, you know. <laughs> 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 
and he chuckled so much that his purple cloak shivered and shook. Oh, please, Grandpa, get me down, please, 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 I called. So Grandpa whirled round and round and chanted a spell. Hamsters are meant to be furry, as Doris has recently found. So let her change back in a hurry, her paws once again on the ground. In a flash, I found myself on the ground by Morris and Grandpa. I could move again. Oh, thank you, thank you, I cried, hugging them both. It's so much nicer being me than a horrible hard statue. I prefer you like this too, Doris, said Morris. Come on, hamsters, said Grandpa. I'll walk home with you. So off we went, and we waved goodbye to Grandpa at the garden gate. But when we got inside the house, what should we find on the mantelpiece but two tiny statues, one of me and one of Morris? Now, who do you think could have put them there? Morris. Making things out of paper can be very exciting. Listen to what happens in Nigel's story. The Paper Palace. Caroline had a bad leg, but it kept her in bed for a long time. She was bored. Then her grandmother bought her a present. A pair of scissors. For my nails? asked Caroline. No, said Grandmother. To cut things out of paper. Animals and trees and houses and anything you can think of. It was not at all easy. First Caroline cut out a car, but it looked more like a jam jar on legs. Then she made a hare and a rabbit, but they looked more like funny hats. Caroline practised and practised, and after a week she could cut out anything she liked with the scissors, even little houses which she would cut out and then stick together. One night Caroline had a strange dream. A little man skipped onto the table. You must make a palace, he said, for the Queen. In three days' time she's giving a party, and it's got to be in a beautiful new palace. Made of paper? asked Caroline. Naturally, said the little man. With a big ballroom and two kitchens and turrets with flags. And you must make footmen too and cooks and dancing girls. Caroline had to laugh about it next morning, but she thought, I'm really going to make it. A whole palace. She began to snip and stick and stick and snip. Walls with windows in them and turrets with battlements. That night, she dreamt of the little man again. He tripped across the ballroom and gave the walls a push. Is it sturdy enough? he asked. Yes, of course, said Caroline. She made the kitchens the next day, and the upper rooms with a broad staircase leading up to them. You'll have to hurry up, said the little man on the third night of her dream. You've only got one day left. Caroline began after breakfast. She cut out twelve dancing girls and stuck them, each on one leg, in a circle round the ballroom. She cut out seven cooks and put them by the stoves in the kitchens. But that night, Caroline did not dream. No, she woke up instead. In the middle of the table, her paper palace stood sparkling, as if a thousand lamps were burning inside it. 
music was pouring from the windows, and shadows were moving against the paper walls. The shadows of people dancing. The party, thought Caroline. She was longing to get up, but her bad leg wouldn't let her. Then she looked at the tall tower. There, at the top, stood the little man of her dream, on guard. Hello, Caroline called to him. At that very moment, everything fell dark and silent. How strange, thought Caroline. And next morning she thought, of course, it was only a dream. But it seemed just as real as if I were awake. I say, how strange, her mother was saying as she set the castle beside Caroline's bed. I don't remember you putting a little man on the tower. Caroline's eyes opened wide. It wasn't a dream, she whispered. What do you mean? But Caroline didn't answer. She peered with one eye through the window into the ballroom, and there, inside the ring of twelve dancing girls, stood another figure, in a wide cloak and with a crown on her head. The Queen. <laughs> And when everyone said, you did cut out that one cleverly, she looks as if she were alive, Caroline would say, I didn't make that one. But no one believed her. Oh, what a lovely story. It was so lovely that I think I've just got to sing a song. Why spoil everything? Why not let me sing a song? Because I sing better. I don't think so. Well, I do. Excuse me, you two. What? what? No one ever asks me to sing a song. Oh, sorry, yes, Jane. sorry, Jane. Please, will you sing us a song now? Of course I will. This one's called Mary Had a Little Lamb. Its face was white as snow And everywhere that Mary went The lamb was sure to go He followed her to school one day That was against the rule It made the children laugh and play To see a lamb at school What makes the lamb love Mary? The children all did cry Cos Mary loves the lamb, you know The teacher did reply Mary had a little lamb Its fleece was white as snow And everywhere that Mary went The lamb was sure to go Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Poor Humpty Dumpty. He should have had a mattress at the bottom of the wall, like this one. Whee! Mary, stop bouncing up and down on that mattress. You'll break the bed. I don't care. Whee! The mattresses are for sleeping on. Now stop bouncing and listen to Denise's story. 
The Princess and the Pea. Prince Goodbody wanted to marry a real princess. The king and queen said, yes, we want you to marry a real princess too. Go and find one. So the prince traveled the world visiting princesses. But he couldn't find one that he liked. They're all too snooty, he said. So the king pinned a notice on the palace gate. It said, wanted a real princess to marry Prince Goodbody. Hundreds of girls came to the palace eager to marry the prince who was very rich and very handsome. They all had pretty dresses and they all looked just like princesses. Every day yet another girl knocked at the gate saying, I'm a princess, I'm a princess, really I am. But the prince was getting worried. How will I know if the girl I choose is a real princess? He asked his mother. Don't worry said the queen. I will know. The queen was very kind to each girl. She invited her to stay for dinner and to sleep at the palace. And she prepared a beautiful bedroom. In the bedroom was a golden bed with a feather mattress. On the feather mattress, the queen put a pea, an ordinary dried pea. Then she laid another mattress on top and another and another and another. The pile of mattresses reached almost to the ceiling. At bedtime, the king and queen and the prince said good night to the latest visitor. I do hope you'll sleep well, said the queen, showing the way to the beautiful bedroom. Early next morning, the queen asked, And did you sleep well, my dear? came the reply. It was so comfortable sleeping on all those mattresses. Can I marry Prince Goodbody, please? I'm afraid not, said the Queen. You see, he wants to marry a real princess, and you aren't a princess at all. And she sent her away. One night, there was a terrible storm. The rain beat down and the wind tore the notice off the palace gate. The king and the queen and Prince Goodbody sat warm and snug by the fire. Suddenly, there was a soft knock at the door. There stood a girl in tattered clothes, her wet hair dripping. Please, may I shelter here just until the rain stops? She asked timidly. The king felt sorry for her and invited her in. And who are you, my dear? I am Princess Pretty from far away, but I fell out of my father's royal coach and I've been wandering about, lost and hungry for days. A likely story, whispered the queen. Does she look like a princess? But the prince said, I believe her. I think she's beautiful and I want to marry her. We shall see, said the queen. And she led Princess Pretty to the beautiful bedroom. I do hope you sleep well, she said. And Princess Pretty climbed the ladder and lay down on the topmost feather mattress up near the ceiling. Early next morning, the queen asked politely, And did you sleep well, pretty, my dear? The young girl blushed and tried to hide a yawn behind her hand. <laughs> You'll think I'm very rude, she said, but I'm afraid I didn't sleep a wink. There seemed to be something small and hard, like a pebble in the mattress, and this morning I'm black and blue with bruises. The queen threw up her hands in delight. <gasps> no one but a real princess is delicate enough to feel a pea through twenty feather mattresses. <gasps> Forgive me, last night I did not believe you. 
But today, I know that you are a real princess. I knew it all along, said Prince Goodbody. And anyway, I loved Pretty the moment I saw her. Who cares if she's a princess or not? I want to marry her anyway. Luckily, Princess Pretty wanted to marry Prince Goodbody too. So the king and queen arranged a beautiful wedding. And ever after, the prince and princess slept in a big gold bed with only one feather mattress on it and no dried peas at all. Is Morris bouncing up and down on his bed again? No, he's bouncing his football against the wall. Oh, really? I've never known such a naughty hamster. Well, I suppose there isn't much you can do with a football except bounce it and kick it. Of course there is. Listen to the rhyme. Morris, it's rhyme time. Rhyme time. Hooray! Football frolic. What can you do with a football? Kick it here, kick it there, all around. Pretend you're a famous footballer in the team at a great football ground. What can you do with a football? Can you balance it right on your nose? Like a seal you can see at the circus? It might take you four or five goes. You might want to try and look fatter. Pretend you're a big bumblebee. Put the football up under your jumper. Just how like a bee can you be? What can you do with a football? Make a circle and everyone sit. Pass it round to the sound of some music. When it stops, if you've got it, you're it. What can you do with a football? You can bounce it from hand to the floor. I bounced it six times without missing. Can you bounce the ball even more? You might want to sit on your football. It would make quite a comfortable seat. When you've done all the things in this poem, a little sit-down is a treat. Watch out, Doris. I've got some eggs for tea. What a lot of eggs. Mind how you carry them. Oh, that's all right. They're not heavy. I know, but mind that step. Oh! Oh! Oh, now look what you've done, you careless hamster. Oh, Every one of those eggs is broken. I'm sorry. What do you think Mrs Dragon would have done if Mr Dragon had been so careless? Really, sometimes uh, I Doris, think you're absolutely... Doris, I, I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Well, listen to Nigel's story then. Mr Dragon's Busy Day A long time ago, in a faraway country, lived two dragons. Their home was a rocky ledge, high up on the side of a mountain. The dragons thought it was the best home in the world, until Mrs Dragon laid a beautiful spotted egg. When she saw her beautiful egg, Mrs Dragon said to Mr Dragon, we shall have to build a nest, a soft nest. This ledge is much too hard for a baby dragon. It might be all right for grown-up dragons with thick, rattly scales, but for a baby dragon just out of an egg, this ledge is too hard and too rough. Now, just fly away and bring back something soft to make a nest with. Mr. Dragon flew off grumpily. He came back carrying some stones in his claws. Here you are, Mrs. Dragon, he called, dropping them onto his wife. Now you can make a nest. These are stones, complained Mrs. Dragon. I can't make a nest from stones. They're much too hard. Go away and find something soft. Mr. Dragon flew away again and soon came back carrying some branches of trees. He dropped them on the ledge beside Mrs. Dragon. She was very angry. I can't use these, she called out. They're much too hard and prickly. To show how angry she was, she breathed fire on the branches and burnt them to cinders. Well, I don't know what you want, snapped Mr. Dragon crossly. 
I am off to the field to catch a nice fat sheep for dinner. And off he flew again. As Mr. Dragon flew down from the mountain, the sheep ran as fast as they could to their shed. All Mr. Dragon got in his claws was a bundle of woolly fleece as the last sheep wriggled away to safety. Bother, said Mr. Dragon. Nothing is going right today. I'm still hungry. Back he flew to the ledge, with the woolly fleece still dangling from his feet. Wonderful, cried Mrs. Dragon, as her husband dropped wearily down beside her with the wool. Feel how soft this wool is, beautifully soft, just the thing to make a nest from. How clever you are. Then Mrs. Dragon set to work to make the softest possible nest for her egg. Not long afterwards, the egg cracked, and out came the nicest, softest little dragon you've ever seen. Doris, I'm in a dancing mood. That's funny. Why? Because I. In a singing mood. Well, let's go into our song and dance. We love to go out dancing wherever the fancy takes us. We often go on till the dead of night and we start when the sunshine wakes us. Dancing, dancing all day long And these are the sounds we make As we dance on the floor and we dance in the field Yes, we dance till our little paws ache Tap, tap, tappy, tap, tap Dancing across the floor Tap, tap, tip, tap, tap And then we go tap some more It's fun, it's fast and furious I know how happy and cheery us When we go tappy, tap, tap, tap Dancing across the floor Patty pat pat, dancing across the field. Pat pat pit pat pat, we're awfully well. Toad and heel, it's a little bit squelchy and sticky. But oh, how jolly and quick we when we go. Patty pat pat, dancing across the field. Do 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 be do be do do be do be do do be do be do do be do dancing across the field. Yeah. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye.